And in Matthew 21, Jesus, this very thing happens, that Jesus receives that praise. Jesus receives that strength from the children who are crying, Hosanna, and his enemies don't want to hear it, right? But, but this shuts their mouth. This stills the enemy. This stills the avenger, right? Because they have nothing to say about that. Jesus points that out. They, they've got, what do, you, what do you say to that? But even just from, you know, obviously having the benefit of the, having all of God's word and being able to look at the New Testament, we can see how clearly now, because we're only into verse 2 in, in Psalm 8, and I said, this is a psalm that's all about Jesus. So verse 1, we saw the excellent name. Verse 2, we're seeing this passage that Jesus quotes about himself from Psalm 8. There, and this isn't written anywhere else. This is, this is the quote that it's coming from. Look at verse number 3. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers... The moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Now we're talking about, he's looking at creation. He's looking at the heavens. He's looking at the planets, the stars, everything that exists. He's looking at this stuff. Well, how about in John chapter 1? You know this passage, very famous. Verse number 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. So what's the subject matter here? The Word, right? And we know later from John 1 that the Word was made flesh, and we beheld His glory, the glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. We know that the Word is talking about Jesus Christ. He's the one who um, is the only one that's begotten of the Father. And it says in verse 3, All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So the creation we see is attributed to Jesus Christ in John chapter 1. Well... In Psalm 8, 3, you know, we're considering the heavens and, uh, you know, the work of thy fingers. Now, I believe the Father commanded the creation and the Son did the work. That's because, because the, 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 the creation is also attributed to the Father as well. And you can see verses that will back that up. And I think they can both, they're both true while you have both working at it, if, you know, one speaking and, and hear the work of his fingers. Now, obviously, still, the song is more poetic. It doesn't mean that Jesus is literally, like, like taking a ball of mud and, and slapping it together with his hands or something like that, right? It's a it's figure of speech to, that we understand. Obviously, we don't know exactly how God brings things into being. So uh, I don't want to get too, you know, <laughs> too deep on, on that. But very clearly here, verse 3, we could still say we're talking about the same thing here. Look at verse number 4. The Bible says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get back to this because Hebrews chapter 2 references this very thing and if you want to, you can turn to Hebrews. We're going to be there in just a minute. Before I get into the application of this being about Jesus Christ also, I would mentioned at the beginning of the sermon, you know, I think this is also referring to just mankind in general. You could say, well, when I look at, at the heavens, when I look at all this great stuff and how you're able to just create all these magnificent things, who are we? <laughs> what is man? What, what, what is it that, why would you be mindful of us? I mean, you're able to create this great beauty and glory and great things, and here's little old people down here on the earth. Why, why would you even think about us? And just, just honoring God for his greatness and his magnitude and just and, and showing humility of saying, well, well, why are we so important? And, you know, that is a good thought to have anyways, to maybe bring you down a little bit, when people get so wrapped up in themselves and they think they're so pride and that they're the only thing that matters, and it's like, do you realize how small you are? Do you realize how truly little? I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize how little they are. They think there's something really great, and they think the world of themselves. But that's because they fill themselves with themselves. Take a step back. And now start going up in your mind. Just look at yourself and go, you go up in an airplane, right? You see these cars, they look like little matchbox cars, and you keep going up higher, and then it's just like you can't even see them. 
And you just, if you just keep going up and up and up, it's like, where are you? Where are the people? What, what are we? Nothing. Little speck. 